Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game that was played at the Top Chess Engine Championship 2018, Season 13, Division 4. On the white end, Leela Chess 0, rated 3219, running on two 1080 Ti's. The opponent, Chess 22K, rated 3072, running on 43 cores. Time controls 30 minutes apiece with a 10 second increment. This is one of the more intriguing games from Division 4, a division Leela would go on to win, and because of this result advanced uh, to Division 3, ongoing at the time of this video. So let's dive in and see what made this one so special. Opening-wise, it is an open Sicilian. Variation, classical. We have a case of opposite sides castling in this game. And a big decision happens early. And by early, I mean move 11. What move does Leela play next? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, the decision? Bishop takes knight. Now, this is not a new move. It has been played a handful of times. Most common, far and away, is to preserve the light square bishop. Drop it back to d3 or e2. This is the big moment in the game that I'd like to talk about. And, uh, well, yeah, it's important. It's one that sets the stage. Uh, it paves the way for the duration of this 79 move encounter. So some things to note. Why is this maybe not so typical? Why is this not such a typical decision? Well, for one, white just captured a knight that's on the edge. Normally you wouldn't want to do that. Normally you wouldn't want to give up your good bishop for a knight either. White did just that. White now does not have the type of harmony you would like to have uh, with your remaining bishop. Bishop on light, pawns on light. Pawns would like to be on dark in this case. White has to be very careful over the dark squares is what I'm getting at. At the moment, this x-factor bishop is not contributing. This can change. This bishop can become active, can be positioned outside of the pawn chain at some stage. White will need to take some great care over the dark squares. One other note, and maybe the most important thing to note with this decision to give up bishop for knight, is that white will be able to lock down on the side of the board where black typically gets play when playing the Sicilian, namely the queen side. There are two great gaps on the queen side. b5 and d5 are big weaknesses for black. Both are holes. White has control with a pawn. We'll soon have control over b5 with a pawn. Pieces will be occupying these squares. There is not going to be any play on the queen side for black. What does this mean? What are, uh, you know, what kind of implications can we take away from this? Well, what's going to happen is black enters a position where there's not a great way forward. It's difficult to find ways to improve the pieces. Meanwhile, white will be able to slowly make progress on the other side of the board. There's one other deeper point that we'll get to in just a bit. Let's get a few more moves in. This moment right here, what would you do next playing as white? Feel free to pause the video. Okay, in the game we have queen to e2. If you're a strategic player, primarily a strategic, strategically minded player, you're likely to be drawn to this game. Uh, it's positional. It flows very nicely, these next handful of moves. It kicks off with this queen to e2 move. Do you see the point behind it? The idea is to open up the d2 square. This was white's worst piece, and it's soon going to morph into a best piece. It's a best piece when it sits on the d5 square. That's where it's headed. c4 and e3. There really isn't much black can do about this little maneuver. If there was one moment, maybe, where black could get in d5, it would be right now, at the moment where d5 is masked, the rook cannot see this square. But if d5 is played in this position, white can win a pawn. This guy falls next. 
So white is going to be able to get to the d5 square. And as mentioned, the queen side is being locked down. So white is giving up pieces for any knight that arrive on d5. The alternative is to try and play around an extremely pesky piece, which is not fun. In fact, you just have to take the knight at this stage. Right? He's doing too much, hitting a rook, hitting a bishop. So he has to go. So we enter this position. Two great gaps are occupied by white pieces. And after this follow-up move c4, do you see what just happened? What happened is uh, this structure here kills these two rooks. You know, when I made my first pass to this game, the thing that stuck out to me most, or one thing I said to myself was, you know, this was a very good example of uh, an opposite color bishop position. You know, I really like how white uh, had a productive role for the light square bishop, and black's dark square bishop didn't do so well. But looking at it a second time, a third time, looking at it a bit deeper, I realized this light square bishop is an absolute menace to the rooks. Uh, the black rooks do not have a productive role in this game because of this configuration by white. The bishop on b5 and the pawns on a4 and c4 kill both black rooks. And they also do something else. What is this? Well, they provide great security for the king. I know they're ex these pawns are extended a little bit, but you'll notice that when, when the king is on a2, there's actually no good checking square by the queen. a2 is a wonderful pocket for the white king. Soon, the black kings, I know we're far away from having any files open towards the black king, but white's going to be able to make some slow, steady progress, and eventually the black king's position is going to be brought into question. So this configuration does a good job, in, in summary, this configuration does a good job of negating both black rooks and providing the king some nice security. Black, uh, excuse me, white should not exchange rooks at this point. That's why we have rook to d3. This is a, these rooks just don't do anything. Nothing happening on the queen side. So this is where the attention turns towards the king's side. How do we do this? Well, we start to control some dark squares. Pushing through with f4. A little back and forth for black. Tough to suggest anything. This is the one active piece black has, the queen. She's on the queen side. She'll eventually go over to the king's side. But the queen is just uh, not coordinated with the black pieces. It's the only active piece, and that's not enough. Her position is going to be brought into question, rook b3. She'll be shooed away. And eventually we're going to get in this f4 move. This was one moment where black was trying to activate the bishop. Bishop e3, bishop d4, no. That's negated with rook to e1. h4, big question for the bishop. Which diagonal? You know, choose one. In the game, it's bishop h6. If the bishop goes to f6, I just want to give you a taste for how play can continue. If the bishop is on f6, white can play queen d2, rook h1, defending the pawn, and then slowly try to squeeze the bishop, getting in a g5 advance, making progress on the king's side. Nothing's happening still on the queen's side. Nothing for black to do. So in this game, it's bishop h6. At least the bishop still observes, uh, observes some uh, dark squares in white's house. White's bishop is much more annoying to black than black's bishop is to white. Easier to work around this guy for white. This bishop is quite annoying to both black rooks, right? Especially if the E file ever opens up, having control over one of these pivot squares is a great bother to the black rooks. Mysterious move, rook a3, I don't know, some 
type of high class waiting move. Tough to wrap my head around what the purpose of rook a3 is in that position. Queen f1, on the other hand, has its points. Uh, rook d3 and f4, right around the corner. So here we go. White is making progress on the king's side. And the, you know, the pieces are just kind of getting out of the way. Rook c8, so the queen could sneak on over to the king's side. And everything is uh, productive, it seems, that white is, white is doing. Moving forward, moving forward, moving forward, and a lot of shuffling. The queen was on b4, now she's on a4. What exactly is she, do what exactly is she doing on h4 right now? I do not know. Remains not, um, you know, not really connected. Okay, actually, this is the first moment where black is connected on f4. But white hits hard. White is hit breaking through now with e5. And something needs to be done. White is ready to take and have a passed pawn, and that would be big trouble. Getting a pawn on d6, you know it's going to be able to get to d7 next and be glued right in there by the bishop. So what does black do? Captures on e5. What does white do next? This is a nice moment in the game. What move would you play after this capture? Feel free to pause the video. Okay. One might think, okay, you don't just immediately recapture, you do something, maybe take a pawn on b7. No, it's a little more fancy than that. We have queen g4. Fancy move. If queen takes queen, black will get mated in just a couple. So, of course, you can't take the queen. A little bit of flash in this one. Up until this point, it's been a lot of uh, positional. It's all been positional. A little little flash there, queen g4, queen e7, pawn takes pawn. So this is a big square. Every white piece is coordinated on d7. There's no time to take the rook on d3 because of queen takes rook. So what does black do? Concedes the d-file and now, you know, tries to key in on the f7 square, anticipates some pressure on f7. So these are two really dummy pieces. Just not contributing. Rook d5, queen e4. I mean, just do a piece comparison. We have two pieces, a couple pawns in black's house, and nothing is happening in white's house. Space advantage for white. A potential pawn break that breaks down light squares to get at the king. An insignificant diagonal that this bishop is on. So let's see how white moves forward from here. This rook cannot be captured. This guy would just become passed and roll fast. So rook d7, rook d6, and this pawn is soon going to fall. Not just yet, though. White at this stage won, I think, last pop quiz. Yeah, I think this is the last pop quiz of the game. What move would you play in this position after... Uh, queen to h3. Feel free to pause the video. Okay, in the game, it is not a pawn grab. Peace improvement. There's a better diagonal for the bishop. d5 is the destination. After b6 is in, c6 is possible. The bishop is going to be amazing on the d5 square. So now e6 is going to be in the king's going to have to go to the corner and uh, there's all these different back rank mating ideas that black has to be on the lookout for again notice the king position for white he will be perfect on the a2 square great security on a2 rook c7 e6 is in rook takes setting up discoveries it's a big problem for black. What to do, actually? I mean, if you can't even defend the b6 at this stage in the game. Rook c7 was played. If black is trying to hang on to the b pawn, this hits really hard. e6. If you capture at this stage, this is a problem. Setting up discovery, and if you go to the corner, you're getting mated. Rook e8, etc. In the game, rook c7, e6 is in. Black is out of the discovery. And white picks up the b-pawn, and soon will hunt the a-pawn. C-pawn is passed. Black has two passed pawns, but it's difficult to get them rolling. 
So let's see how white makes progress. Rook h1. Queen is central. A pawn is hunted now. And from here, king a2. That was check. Queen takes a5 at this point is not a move. There'd be a skewer. So first it's bishop e6. Fork. Queen f6. Now queen takes a. There is no bishop d8. So three passed pawns. First is two. But these guys on the king's side, tough to get them rolling. Rook d8. Queen b5. And slow improvements. This bishop is far better than this guy on g5. Right in the center, controlling both wings of the board from d5. So offer of a queen exchange soon. There was pressure on h7. Three pieces, however indirect it is. There's a focal point, h7. Queen b6. Really can't avoid the queen exchange. Queen takes queen in the game if black tries to maintain the queen. Keep pressure here, defense there. There's a sacrifice. White would be able to take the bishop. And then take on h7. And eventually... Give checkmate. So you can't avoid the queen exchange. Queens are off, and it's simple from here. Just advance the passed pawns. Get some security for the pieces. And there goes the A pawn. It is fast. Nice little move to be familiar with. The rook is absolutely dead. Opposite color bishops. This structure cannot be challenged, and if this pawn ever gets to b6, that bishop's going to cry. So... Not much more to really comment on. White just advances the passers. Bishop takes rook. The rook would be dead. So just getting a few more moves in. Bishop's getting harassed a little bit. And from here, this is actually the last move of the game. Bishop e5, last move of the game is just ended at this point. White is awarded the win. Now, if this game did continue... Uh, why could just push the b pawn? This is one way to do it. Bishop takes rook, you recapture, b6 is on the way. And what do you do about that? Not too much. Let's say white bolts, b6. The rook has to give itself up for something. And I don't even know what's best. Probably take a pawn instead of the bishop, right? And of course, this is still winning for white. So it's clean from here. This is the final move. What more to say with this one? It's really going all the way back to this decision on move 11. Um, Positional-minded players, this is one that sticks out to me. I really, you know, I really like this idea. Provides white a, a clamp down on the queen side, and then you could slowly make progress on the other side of the board. If black isn't getting in this d5 move, I don't believe that there is an opportunity to get in d5. It's a... Uh, Slow, steady progress for white and a lot of uh, nothing moves for black. I don't know. What are your thoughts on this one? This is a tough one for me. You know, I'll sometimes get the question, well, how could black have improved? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> where, where is there a way to improve? Sometimes you, you come across a game like this where you, uh, that, that question is difficult to answer. I'm not sure. Feel free to share your thoughts. To this one in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.